So guys, last night Samsung officially announced the release of the Samsung S9 and S9 Plus. It will be released in a few weeks. I will give my thoughts about those in a video later on today. But right now, what I want to do is talk about that. I've got a new television. Now, I talked about this last week. I had to return my Panasonic 50-inch television and it was a long return process. But I was without a television for about a week or so. But I went out and I bought this LG television. Now in this video what I want to do is just talk about why I bought it. I'm not going to go into too much detail as to the, the kind of technical side of things. I've said this before guys, I am not the most technical when it comes to televisions. You know, I, I read these reviews and they're talking about colour gamuts and the, the black gradients and all these colour things and I'll be honest, a lot of it's over my head. Um, I do think I know more than the average person on the street when it comes to televisions because I mean, I'm still a tech guy, I still like, look at the technical details of things, but when it comes to televisions, consider me an average Joe in that regard. So, what I'll be talking about is just why I bought this particular television and give you my thinking behind it. So, the television that I bought, if I can bring this around, is this one, the 55 inch LG Super UHD TV 55 SG810V. Now, the actual box, uh, it doesn't have the, the OV at the end, so I don't know if that's like a specific to Curry's where I bought it, the, the code that I bought. Um, some features, nano cell display, that's their kind of marketing. Speak active HDI with Dolby Vision, minimal design, Harman Kardon speakers. So 20 watt speakers and kind of standard stand, which I won't be using, that's to attach it to the back of the TV. And you get manuals, it's got an a plus rating when it comes to power and this is the remote I'll show you this in a second it's actually one of the, the better selling points of the, the TV um, as far as the width of the television etc well it's not the thinnest you'll see OLED TVs that are a little bit thinner a little bit lighter but there's still a lot of thicker ones out there um, it's fairly, fairly thin and it's got a little bit of a lip at the bottom which nearly caused a problem with my stand at the, the back but I actually did fit okay. So, so uh, this is an IPS screen and most of the televisions you see use the VA ones, the vertical alignment ones and a lot of people don't like IPS televisions and I was gearing towards the other ones as well. Uh, my friend Mark says that he likes IPS and I started looking into it more and I think I've made the right decision. I think I have. I spent a lot of time in Curry's and, and you know you went to Curry's, it's a UK store and you know it's got dozens and dozens of televisions and it's not always the best place to look at a television because they've got the bright lights and they've got the tel television set up in demo mode and you don't always get the same when you go back home but I think it's good to go and actually see a television and see what it's like. First thing I would say is, you know, with an IPS display is Back here, you can see the windows open. When I used to sit here for lunch and put the tele television on, my last Panasonic television, when something was dark, you know, if you were watching a drama or something and there was a lot of dark colours, really difficult to actually see the television. That's not the case with this one. Now, there's downsides to an IPS, but this is a backlit LED screen, and because of that, it makes it easier to see it in daylight. Uh, and the viewing angles are really good. So, I mean, you can see, obviously, head-on, most televisions are fine, but... Um, you know, like even at like, like that's 180 degrees and then going around like that. So if you've got a lot of friends around you watching football or a film or something, viewing angles isn't something you need to worry about with an IPS screen. But there are downsides, you know, and again, I'm not going to go into the downsides too much, it's just this is one of the reasons why I went for this. Now, they're calling this Super UHD, Super 4K or whatever. It's a 4K screen uh, and you'll see a lot of variations like this. There's OLED, but... As far as LED goes, LG have got the Super UHD Nano Technology, Samsung have got your, their Q LED, and it's kind of like the next generation of LED, the best version of LED. I, I'm not explaining it the best way here, but um, for what a lot of people say is, you know, as far as the differences between these screens, they're calling it Super UHD, Samsung are calling it Q LED. There's a lot of marketing talk in between the technical specifications, and it's kind of like an Apple thing, where they're all calling their own version of it something different. Um, this is, for what I've led to believe, is a 10-bit panel. Now, as far as panels go, um, 
you know, you'll see discussions online as far as what the panels are. 8-bit can give you 16.77 million colours and when you jump up to 10-bit you get 1.07 billion. Now, what does that mean? Well, 10-bit panels give you more colours. Now the problem is, when you're buying a television, is that lots of them are 8-bit, lots of them are 8-bit plus FRC and lots of them are 10-bit. Now the ones in the middle is what most 4K TVs are in the budget range. They're all 8-bit plus uh, FRC and it basically from one way to believe it's an 8-bit panel but they're using software to try and display the additional colours, I think. But it's not the same as a 10-bit panel, it's not as good as a 10-bit panel but it's, you know, it's a kind of like a workaround. The problem is if, you know, lots of stores and lots of manufacturers market 8-bit plus FRC panels as being 10-bit. So you really do need to watch that and I think this is 10-bit. Like I read reviews and people say there was a 10-bit panel. It says 10-bit on their website and I believe it is a 10-bit panel. But there are, you know, there are other panels out there and they say that they're 10-bit when they're not. So you kind of need to be careful. But in the grand scale of things, I don't know. I mean, I looked, at, I looked, on, uh, I looked in Curry's and I compared this to the lowest price Samsung QLED. This was £729. There was a 55-inch Samsung just behind it. And that was QLED, what Samsung called QLED. Uh, and that was like £250 or £270 more. Um, when I actually, and you know, it is difficult in the shop, I think. But when you're actually in the, in the shop, I played around with the menu. I played around, I listened to music and I looked at the screens. It's very, very difficult sometimes when you're looking at the television side by side. And sometimes I don't know if it's justified paying a lot more money. Now, um, I think I've made the right choice, but again, I, I spoke about the viewing angles, I spoke about how thin it is. Around the side, there's basically four HDMI and there is a three USB, one of them is USB 3, and then you've got like a one an optical cable and um, there's a coaxial for yeah, an antenna, kind of part of the course, but it doesn't have a lot of advanced features, but that's not an issue for me. So, speakers are pretty good on this. Um, but one of the things I really like about this is the operating system and I like the mouse. This is what's called a magic mouse they call it and if it comes into focus you can see there it's kind of like a little little roller wheel something you get in a mouse. The other thing I like about here is it's got Netflix and Amazon because those are the two services I use the most. I use Netflix a lot, I use Amazon because, of, because uh, I have Amazon Prime and um, the only other service I use from that is basically YouTube. I mean, I might use the other app every now and then, but those Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube are the services I use the most. Now, you can see here, when you, you push this here, you can scroll and you can push the button. It's, it's very, very easy to use, you know, when you move this around. It's very intuitive. And, you know, I played around in, in the shop moving this around, and there was another LG uh, television. It was one of the 65 inch for the same price as this, you know, a larger television, but. It wasn't as good a panel and the, the, the remote didn't have this mouse thing and see after just using this, you know, the left and right, you really get used to this after a while and you think this is the way sh they should all be. It's just, you know, moving the wand around, it works really well. Now LG called their uh, operating system WebOS. I might, I'll do another video and I'll show you that, uh, you know, I'll show you that in detail. But, it you know, it takes advantage of this magic mouse and it's very, very easy to use. Um, you can see you can scroll lots of apps there you know for UK kind of basic apps uh, and if you go into their content content store sorry if I can talk so there's a content store and you can kind of you can see videos etc but you can um, download more apps you get these kind of apps with every modern television now every modern smart television um, and where we got here, so down here I've got the source and I was, you know, I can go to my PlayStation and I was watching Fargo. Now the the option that you saw before, if I go to Amazon for example, scroll down, it, it, it seems fairly quick to me. So, you know, obviously because of like copyright and all that, I can't really play too much of anything. But it is fairly loud, I will say that. Takes a while to adjust that. 
Um, you probably noticed as well, there's on the on the remote there is voice recognition, so you can actually enter um, something, and you can you know if I'm searching for something, I can search for a film or something, and it will look through Netflix, etc. You just have to push this, and that will work with Amazon and all that as well. So it is pretty cool. Now I will do another video focusing on the remote and WebOS. Um, this was really just a quick overview as to why I bought this. And I'm going back, but what I really want to do is do that, show you the menu. Now it's there. So, um, as I said, I will show you guys WebOS another day. Have I bought the right television? Well, here's the thing. I didn't really spend too much time on it. I, had, I didn't have a television for a week or so, but I didn't spend a lot of time looking at reviews. I looked at a couple of reviews and I kind of narrowed it down to a few choices. I was looking at Hisense. I was mainly looking at 65-inch television, actually. I wanted something a little bit bigger so I can push it further back um, because, if you, you know, it's all about distance, obviously, where you sit. But if I had a larger television, I probably could have pushed it more into the wall. Um, but when it comes to televisions, you get a larger screen and you pay more money. You know, this particular TV I paid 729 If I went to 60-inch, not 65, 60-inch, I think it was up to, like, £1,100. So you're talking, you know, another 50% on the cost to get another 5-inch in a diagonal. And it comes a point where I think 55 inch is kind of like, 49 and 55 inch seems to be the sweet spot in the TV industry right now. When you go to 58, 60, 65, then you're paying much more money for the larger screen. But, I don't know. I mean, I, I would like a 65 inch television, but, it, it, you know, from a price point of view, I was thinking, well, I can get a bigger screen and a poorer panel. And I think 55 inch is not too big. It's a, a good size and I got a good uh, screen. So the speakers seem pretty good, um, the television seems quite good panel wise. I, I, I must admit I do like the IPS, I, I like the viewing angles, I like how it's not too reflective but I can see it in the daylight and things like that. So um, yeah, it looks quite good. Now I will do another video about the Web OS but um, I think I made the right choice and as I said I was saying before about, I, you know, I, I kind of looked at it for a week or so. I really didn't want to spend weeks and weeks and weeks over analysing or waiting for a, a you know a bargain television to arise. Um, there was probably five televisions that I, I would have I could have picked. And when I went to Curry's, I saw about three of the ones that I was looking at, and I saw this one and I thought, you know what? One, I like the screen. It's a decent size. It's a decent price. I like the operating system, and it sounds silly, but I did like the fact that it had Amazon into the remote as well. But um, it seems really good. I'm not quite happy with it. So. Thankfully the saga is over. This one came with a five year warranty as well. So if there was any problems in the future, you know, at least I've got a, quite a long warranty. Um, I will do another video and I'll show you this web OS in more detail because I think that's kind of at the heart of the television as far as what it can do. But as far as, you know, quality goes, as far as the screen goes, well, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll just link to the, um, the specifications guys and you can check that out because as I said, I am an average Joe. But what I would say is when you put on these kind of demo things, when you put on like the, um, like the 4K content and the videos and all that, it looks really good. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's all I was looking for. Just something that was good quality, decent speakers, uh, and something that wasn't going to break the bank. So there you have it. So thanks for watching guys and thanks for all of you all of you guys that you know watched my video the other day and gave me suggestions and gave me you know some you know pointed me in the right direction as to what television to buy. Uh, I think I've done okay. I don't have any regrets about buying this television. Um, I went into the store, you know, thinking I could buy any type of television really, and I picked this one and I'm fairly happy with it. So thanks for watching guys and stay tuned. I will do a video about the Samsung S9 later on today after I've got something to eat and I'll give you my thoughts on well, what I think about that phone, eh, the price point and the specifications and the features and all that. That's what I normally do guys, isn't it? So uh, thanks for watching. Leave a comment and I'll speak to you all very soon. Take care.